No, no. In fact, I really have a theory about the Beatles. They are a combination of, of rock and roll and folk harmonies. I'm, I, I like them, so you're, if you're looking for a no vote, you're not going to get one. I like the Beatles. I'm not speaking of them personally, however. I'm speaking of their music. <laughs> We sure are. Ms. Davis, what are some of the problems you run into with the TW3 since the live show? Well, uh, now that we're back on the air, I really can't say because uh, we haven't been on enough this year to be able to tell so far. Some of the problems that I have encountered in the past have been uh, changing of lyrics, let's say, at 9 o'clock or even up to 9.15, just before we go on the air. It's a frightening experience with that song anyway, you know. And uh, this nonsense of learning lyrics at the very last minute is just hair-raising. It's terrifying. What sort of response do you get from the people you're more or less putting on the griddle? Well, of course, Goldwater wasn't very happy with us to begin with, so he made a point of preempting us every week with the exception of one, in which the Democratic Party had taken, a, I think, a one- or two-minute slot so that... Uh, relieved him of, of being able to preempt us that one week. But do you get any letters from these people? Yes, um, we do, but they're, they all are in pretty good spirits about the show. They, they accept it in the manner which is intended, which is not slanderous, but funny, you know. What are some of the situations uh, that have come up with some of the personalities that have been quite interesting? Well, I think for one, Mr. Salinger thought that our song on him last year was very acceptable to him, and uh, I think he was uh, under the impression that we were rooting for him, which in fact we're not for anybody. You know, the show is absolutely neutral as far as that goes, but everyone takes it for their own, you know, and thinks that we're making a plug for them in a roundabout way, which is interesting. To your concert here in Atlanta today, I noticed in some of the uh, background on you, your grandfather was a former president of Panama. Is this where you learned to play the guitar? No, in fact it isn't. I learned my Spanish there, of course, because I grew up there partly as a child. And um, my guitar didn't come until, let's see, I was about 18 or 19. And uh, I had fooled around to some extent with a ukulele and something called a tiple, which is a 12-string Colombian instrument, also guitar-shaped. There are two kinds of tiples, a small one and a large one. And I had been playing the large one, but of course in this country the wood fell apart. You know, I mean, the, the uh, inlay started to pop out and everything, it's, it fell apart. So they um, gave me a guitar and that started off my guitar in years. Do you think Beatlemania will ever uh, endanger the life of folk singing? 